Hello, welcome to free school exam preparation. Today we're going to talk about Edexcel International AS and A levels decision mathematics one. In this lecture, we'll continue chapter one algorithms. So in the first lecture, we've talked about what is an algorithm and we use the words or flow chart to represent an algorithm. And now we're going to look at one sorting algorithm, which is called bubble sort. So what is a sorting algorithm? So let's say if we have a list of items, so it can be a list of numbers, uh, a list of um, like strings or like a list of words, right? So we want to sort them in a certain order. So let's say if we want the number to be in the descending order, so that means from the largest to the smallest, or we want the numbers to be the ascending order, so that means from the smallest to largest. Or if we have like names, so we want to sort them in the uh, alphabetical order, right? So how can we sort them in the desired order? So we can use different algorithms. So the first method we're going to introduce is called bubble sort. Okay, so here is one example. So we have a list of numbers and we want to sort them in the descending order. So that means from the largest to the smallest. Okay, so what can we do here? So bubble sort is like this. So for step one, so we are trying to compare adjacent items. So let's say we are trying to compare these two items, right? So if they are in the descending order, because we are looking for descending order, then we don't need to do anything. We just keep them like this. Okay, so now they are in the correct order, so we don't need to do anything. We look at the next two adjacent items, so 48 and 57. So are they in the descending order? The answer is no. So in this case, we are going to swap them. So we'll have 63, 57, 48, 32, 48, 72, 49, 61, 39. Okay, so we've compared the second item and the third item. And now we swap them, right? So we're going to look at the third item and the fourth item. So are they in descending order? So we just look at these two items, yes, right? Because 48 is greater than 32. Now we look at the fourth and fifth item. So are they in the descending order? The answer is no. So in this case, we are going to swap them. So we have 48, and here is 48, 32. And then we keep the rest items. Okay, so now we are going to look at, so we we'll look at the fourth and fifth. So now we compare the fifth and sixth. So they are not in descending order, so we have to swap them. 48, 72, 32, right? Okay, so now we look at these two items, 32 and 49. Again, they are not in descending order because 32 is less than 49. So in this case, we are going to swap them. So we have 49, 32. Okay, now we look at this 32 and 61. So are they in correct order? The answer is no. So we swap them. 8, 48, 72, 49, 61, 32, 39. And now we look at these two items. So they are not in correct order. So we will swap them. So we will have this 32 at the end and 39 here. Okay, so what is 32? Actually, 32 is the smallest number in this list. So it is supposed to be at the end of the list, right? Because we want the descending order. So 32 is in its good position. So we don't want to move the 32 anymore. Now we just look at all the items before 32. And we call these items a working list. So initially, our working list is this whole list. And now the working list length is shrink by one because we don't care about 32 anymore. It's already in the good position. Okay, so after we do this, we say this is one pass because we pass through all the items here. Now we are going to start our second pass. So we do from the beginning. Now we compare these two, 63 and 57. So they are in the good order, right? So we don't need to do anything. 
And then we look at the next one, 57, 48. Still, they are in good order. We don't need to worry. 48, 48, because descending order means, um, actually, this might be, I think, because they don't have repeating number. Let's just assume it's non-increasing order. So 48, 48 should be OK. And then we look at this 48 and 72. So here, there is a problem. So we need to swap them. So we have this 48 being swapped with 72. And here we have 49, 61, 39, 32. OK, so we compare this 48 and 49. So we need to swap them. 48, 72, 49, 48. Right? And then we compare this 48 and 61. So we need to swap them. 57, 48, 72, 49, 61, 48, 31, 32. Oh, sorry, 39, 32. OK, now we compare this 48 and 39. So they are in good order because they are the last two items in this working list. Now we have a smaller work, working list, right? So we don't need to check other items. So we have done our second pass. Now we go with the third pass. So from the second pass to the third pass, this working list will be decreased by one because this 39 is in good position. Now we have two items in good position. We, have, we only need to work on this one. So our new working list is like this. So we compare 63 and 57, no need to swap. 57, 48, no need to swap. However, if we compare this 48 and 72, so we need to swap. So we have 63. 57, 72, 48, 49, 61, 48, and we put a line here because 39, 32 are already in good order. Okay, so we've swapped these two. Now we look at these two. So we need to swap, right? So 63, 57, 72, 49, 48, 61, 48. And then these two we just keep here. And then we compare these two, we need to swap. So 67, uh, 63, 57, 72, 49, 61, 48, 48, 39, 32. Okay, so we compare these two, so they are in good order. So we don't need to sort, uh, swap them. Okay, so we've done our third pass. So we know this 48, this one is in good order. So we can just draw a line here. Now our working list is like here. So we go from the beginning again. So 63, 57 in good order. We don't worry. However, if we compare 57, 72, they are uh, like in reverse order. So we just swap them. Okay, so 48, 39, 32. Now we compare this 57 and 49 in good order. However, 49, 61 is not. So we have to swap them. 57, 61, 49, 48. And then we draw a line here because uh, behind this line are, are not in our working list. Okay, so 49, 48 in good order. Okay, so we've done our fourth pass. So this 48 is in correct position, right? So our working list is just these five numbers. Now we do another pass from the beginning. 63 and 72, we need to swap. 57, 61, 49. And then 63 and 57, we don't need to swap. However, 57, 61, we need to swap. 72, 63, 61, 57, 49. OK, and then we compare this 57, 49. We don't need to swap. So we've done our fifth pass. OK, so this 49 is in good position. Now our working list has only four elements. So we go from the beginning, 72, 63, no need to swap. 63 and 61, no need to swap. 61 and 57, no need to swap. So we've done our sixth pass, and there's nothing we have swapped. So we can stop our um, like running of this algorithm. If there is no more swap during this pass, so that means everything is in good order. OK, so this is called bubble sort. So let's just take a look at this question here. So a list of n items to be written in ascending order using a bubble sort. So the minimum number of passes needed. OK, so think about when do we need minimum number of pass. No matter what, we need to have one pass, right? However, if during this one pass, 
we don't do any swap. According to our algorithm, we stop running. Okay, so the minimum number of passes needed is one. And under which situation we don't need to swap? So that means the n items are already in ascending order, right? So you can write here n items are in ascending order. So let me give you one example. So let's say if we have four items, one, two, three, four. So if I write like this, I want to sort this list in ascending order. So I compare this one and two, no need to swap. Two and three, no need to swap. Three and four, no need to swap. So we've done this pass and we haven't swapped anything. So we can stop running our algorithm. So we have done only one pass. And the condition is they are in uh, already in ascending order. Okay, how about the maximum number of passes needed? Okay, so think about if we have a situation, let's say four, three, two, one. So we still want ascending order. So we compare this four and three, we swap. And then we compare this four and two, we swap. And then we compare this four and one, we need to swap, right? Okay, so now we've done one pass. So this four is in good order. And now we look at this three, two, one. So we need to swap this two and three. And then we need to swap this one and three. So we have two, one, three. So now three is in good order. So we've done our second pass, two passes. And now I compare this two and one. So we have one, two here. And then we've done with this pass. So this is our third pass. Okay, so now we look at the working list here is only one. So we look at this, um, you can think about this is one pass at, um, as well. So we've done four pass. So there's no swap here because we only have one item. So this algorithm can stop running. Okay, so how many passes we have done? So we have done four passes, right? So if there are n items, so the maximum number of passes needed will be n. Okay, so which circumstances this will happen? So that means it is in descending order. So basically, if you want this one to be in ascending order, but now I'm having the reverse order um, as a requirement. So you may need to swap items in every pass. Um, so that's why we need n passes. Okay, so that's about bubble sort. Maybe we can try another example. So this is a question from page 15, question three. So we still want to use bubble sort to sort those in alphabetical order. Okay, so now let's look at N and H. Let me just write down, because sometimes uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, so N and H, right? So we want in alphabetical order. So H should be in front of N. So we need to swap these two. So we have H, N, and then we copy all the other items here. M, P, L, right? And then I compare this N and R. So are they in the correct order? So N's here are correct. Okay, R and K, so we need to swap. So we have H, N, K, R, S, C, J, E, M, P, L. Okay, and then we compare this R, S, correct order. However, S, C, we need to swap. So H, N, K, R, C, S, J, E, M, P, L, and S, J, we need to swap. H, N, K, R, C, J. S, E, M, P, L, and S, E, we need to swap, H, N, K, R, C, J, E, S, M, P, L, and S and M, we need to swap, H, N, K, R, C, J, E, M, S, P, L, and S and P, we need to swap, H, N, K, R, C, J, E, M, P, S, L, and S and L, we need to swap, H, N, K, R, C, J, E, M, P, L, S. Okay, so we've done one pass, 
right? And this S is in correct order right now because S, I think, should be the last in this list, right? So it's not already in the last. Okay, now we start with the second part. So we compare H and N. So H is here and here, no need to swap. And N and K, so we need to swap. And then we keep here. So you can continue with this, right? And then you compare this N and R, do we need to swap? Um, the answer is no. And R and C, we need to swap. So after this, we would expect R will be at the end because it is supposed to be in the right order um, in the second pass. And then we can shrink our working list for those items, and then we can do the passes again. Okay, so this is about bubble sort. And now we look at a different type of sorting method, which is called quick sort. Okay, so quick sort is quick, right? So let's just think about why. Uh, how do we do this? So here, actually, we need to introduce um, an idea called pivot. So pivot is one uh, item in this list. And then we'll choose that one to be compared with all the other items. So how do we choose this pivot? So let's say if we have n items in the list, uh, in the list, so we use n plus one over two. And if this is an integer, we we'll just use this one uh, as our pivot. However, if this is not integer, then we round up. So for example, if this is three point five, then we round to four. Right, if it's already four, then we just keep it as four. Okay, so now let's look at this one as an example. So here, how many items? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So n equals to eleven. Okay, so n plus one over two is six. So the six item will be our first pivot. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this one will be our pivot. Okay, so what are we going to do here is we are going to compare each of the item from the left to the right with this pivot C. So let's look at this N here. N should be, be uh, behind C in alphabetical order, right? Let me just write this down because B E F G H I J K L M N. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Okay, so N should be behind C. So we just put N to here. And how about H? H should be behind C. So we put H here, right? And R should be behind C. We put R here. So you just go according to the order. And K is behind C. So we put K here. S is behind C. So we just put S here. Okay, J is behind C, so we put J here. E is behind C, we put here. And M is behind C, so we put here. P is behind C, we put here. L is behind C, we put here. Okay, so everything here are behind C. Or you can think about they are greater than C, right? So we just leave they are here, and C will be this one. Okay, so if we have any items, before C, so we just write to the left of C. Okay, so we've done with this C. Now we can eliminate this one from our working list. So how many items are in our working list now? So there are 10, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So our new item length will be 10. So we use n plus 1 over 2, which is 5.5. And we round up to six. And we use this one as our new pivot element. So the new pivot starts from the working list first one. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So this one will be J. So here I put a circle here. So that means this item is already sorted. We don't worry about this. And put a square. So that shows that's the pivot we are currently working on. Okay, so we just keep um, C here, right? We don't touch this anymore. So we compare each of these with J. So N is behind J, so I just leave it here. And H is before J, right? Is it H before J? Yes. So I put H in the front. And R is behind J, so I put R here. 
K is behind J, so I leave K here. S is behind J, and E is before J, so I just leave it here. You don't need to change the order of H and E. We just go with the order when you see it, right? So M is behind J, so we put M here. P is behind J. L is behind J. Okay, so all these things are behind J, and these two are before J. Now we put J here. So this is before J. J behind J. Okay, so we've done with this pivot J. So we just do a circle here. Now we have two sub-working lists. The first one contains two elements. And the second sub-list contains how many elements? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven elements. Okay, now we work on each of these sub-lists. So for the first sub-list, here we have two items, so n equals to 2. And then we use n plus 1 over 2, which is 1.5. So we round to 2. So this will be our pivot. So that's the second element in this list, which is e. Okay, so we compare the rest of the items, which there is only one with this pivot e. So h should be behind e, right? So we just need to put h here, and then there's nothing else. And then we write e here, because h is behind e, so we write e in the front. And we've done with c, we've done with j, and we've done with this e. Okay, now let's look at this sublist. So here we have how many elements? Uh, seven, right? So n equals to seven. So seven plus one over two is four. So the fourth element will be our pivot. So one, two, three, four. So this one. Now we compare the items with this pivot. N is before S, so we keep it. R is, uh, RS is before S. K is before S. And M is before S. P is before S. And L is before S. And S is here. So we've done with this pivot S. Okay, so now we have two sublists. The first one contains only one element, and the second one contains six elements. Now we're working on each sublist. For this one, because n is one, so it's just itself, right? So we can think about this can be used as a pivot and nothing to be compared with it, so it's done. So we just put a circle here. Now for here, we have n equals to 6. So 6 plus 1 over 2 equals to 3.5. We round up to 4. So we look at the fourth item to be our pivot of this list. First, second, third, fourth. So this one. So we put a square. So that means the one we are working on. So n is behind m, right? So we put n here. r is behind m. And k is in front of m. P is behind M, L is be before M. Okay, so this are before, and here is M, and here we have behind, and we keep this S here. Okay, so M is done. Now we have two um, like sublists. So the first one has two elements. So N equals to two. So we use two plus one over two, which is 1.5. So round up to two. So this L will become our new pivot for this sublist. Okay, so I compare k with l. k is before l, so I write k here. And no more element, so we write l. Okay, so we have c, e, h, j. And l has done with its pivot row, and m is done. And here we have three elements, so n equals to three. Three plus one over two, so we have two. So the second element, r, will be our pivot. n compared with r, n is in the front. P compares with R, it's in the front. And no more element, so we write R here. So R has done with its pivot row. And now we have two small, uh, sorry, two sublists. The first one contains only one element. So this one itself can be pivot, and no one's comparing with it, so it's done. And here, N and P, we can do the same thing. A equals to 2, so 2 plus 1 over 2, 1 1.5 round up, which is 2. Okay, so P will be our pivot. And then I compare this n with p. So n is before p. Okay, so n is um, like in the right position, and we write p here. So p has done with the row of pivot. Okay, so we have c, e, h, j, k, 
L and M. So we only have one element, uh, one sublist left, which is N, and itself is pivot, and then no one to compare, so it's done with its pivot job. Okay, so every element has become pivot. So in this case, we have done our algorithm, so we can stop. So they are already in good order. Okay, so this is called quick sort. Okay, so now let's just take a look at this question. So a list of n items to be sorted in ascending order using bubble sort. So the maximum number of comparisons to be made. Okay, so how do we do this question? Okay, so let's just think about three items, right? So because we talk about for bubble sort, so if we want this to have maximum of passes, so it must be in the uh, descending order, right? Because we want ascending order. So it will be three to one. Let's just give one example. So three will be compared with two. So how, com how many comparisons? So we have one. And two is three. After three compared with two, so we have two, three, one. And three and one needs to be compared, right? So we have two, one, three. So here for the first pass, we've already got two comparisons. And now for the second part, so because this three is in good position, so we compare this two and one. So here we need one comparison. Okay, so in total, how many comparisons do we need? So we need two plus one. So think about if we have n items, so they are in descending order. So for the first pass, the first element needs to come, uh, like we need to compare all the adjacent elements, right? So let's say A1, A2. A3 until AN. So A1 will be compared with A2. A2 will be compared with A3. And continue, and the last comparison will be AN minus 1 will be compared with AN. So we have N minus 1 comparisons. And assume the last item is done. So we have a working list with length N minus 1. Right, we need to do another pass. So in this case, we'll make another N minus 2 comparisons. And up until um, you finish this second pass, so we have n minus 2 items in the working list. So we need to compare n minus 3 times. So we'll compare n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 and continue until 1. So in total, we'll have n times n minus 1 over 2 comparisons. So that's for question A. Okay, when will a bubble sort be quicker than a quick sort? Okay, so for a bubble sort, if it's already sorted, let's say one, two, three, four. So in this case, we only need one pass. And how many comparisons do we need? We need to make three comparisons, right? Because one compare two, two compare three, three compare four, that's it. So if we have n items, they are in ascending order already. So we need n minus one comparisons. Okay, let's think about a quick sort. So because here we have four items, so four plus one over two, so we have this three be our pivot. So one will compare with three, two will compare with three, four will compare with three, right? So in this case, we've already got three comparisons. So if we have n items, so here we have n minus one comparisons. And then we have two sublists. So here, two will be chosen as a pivot. So one will be compared with two. So that means we need extra comparisons. And if we have more items, we need to do more comparisons because every element needs to be a pivot. So in this case, bubble sort will be much faster than a quick sort. So when will bubble sort be quicker? So if uh, the list is already in ascending order. So don't get confused, quick sort sometimes is not quick. Okay, so now let's take a look at these two examples, right? So which one will be quicker? So let's do the first one. Uh, let me just erase something here. Okay, so we'll have this one, two, three, seven. Now let's just use bubble sort. So one compare with two, two compare with three, three com compare with seven. We don't need to change anything. Seven compares with four. So one, two, three, four, seven. And seven compare with five. So we need to change one, two, three, four, five, seven, six, right? Seven compare with six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, so we've done one pass. So how many comparisons did we make? So in total, there are seven items. So we make six comparisons for the first pass. And now we have these items like this. Now we compare one and two, two and three, three and four, four and five, five and six, because seven we don't need to compare. So here we compared five times. And there's no swap, so we are done. So in total, there are 11 comparisons if we use bubble sort. Okay, so how about if we use quick sort? So most likely, quick sort will be not quick in this case. Why is that? Because if you look at these items, they are already or nearly in ascending order. So let's just try quick sort. So first we have seven items, so n equals to seven. Seven plus one over two, so four. So seven will be chosen as our pivot. Okay, so one compared with seven, so we keep here, two compared with seven, three, four, five, six. So everything has been compa uh, compared with seven, and now we have seven here. Okay, so here we make six comparisons. And now this seven is done. Oops, sorry, I should not draw like this. So we just put a circle here, right? So we have a sublist, and here we have six items. So six plus one over two, 3.5, we round up, so four. Okay, so this one is our pivot. So one compare, two compare, three compare, five compare, six compare. So here, how many comparisons we made? We made five comparisons, right? So this four is done. And now we don't need to um, worry about this four and seven. So we look at this sub list here. So here we still need to make comparisons. So we have three, which is n plus one over two. So it's two. So this one will be our pivot. So one compared with two, three compared with two. So we need another two. Okay, so here we don't need to continue because it's already, we have more comparisons than bubble sort. So in this case, bubble sort will be faster. Okay, now let's look at this one. Because this one is in a very bad order, so nearly descending, or, um, not really, maybe it's still quite ascending. Maybe let's just try this one. So we can't say um, until we try it, right? Okay, so for bubble salt, so we need to first make seven, uh, sorry, six comparisons for the first pass. So what will this one look like? So it will be two, three, four, five, six, and here will be one, seven. So after the first pass. And for the second pass, we need to make five comparisons, and it will look like two, three, four, five, one, six, after the second pass. And for the third pass, we'll have two, three, uh, four, one, five. So we made four comparisons, right? And then we just keep this six, seven here. So this five's done. And then we compare. So we have two, three, one, four. Okay, so we have made another three comparisons. And we can continue. So this four is done. So we have two, one, three. And we keep the rest items. So we made another two comparisons. So this three is done. And now we make another comparison, one and two. Okay, so we made... Uh, one comparison. So in total, we've made how many comparisons? Seven times three, 21. Okay, so if we use quick sort. Okay, so let's just try this one. So first we have n equals to seven. So seven plus one over two equals to four. Okay, so this one will be our pivot. And we compare with five, right? So we will end up with two, three, sorry, two, three, four. Four, and then one, six, seven, they are greater than five, and we put five here. Okay, five is done. Now we look at this sublist. So in the first um, time, we compared how many times? Six times, right? And here we have four, so four items plus one over two, five, 2.5, so round up, we have three. So this one will be our new pivot. So when we compare this one, we'll have one, uh, sorry, two, three, one, four. Okay, so how many comparisons we made? We made three here. And this five we keep. Uh, this four is done. And here we use seven because n is two, right? Two plus one over two, round up, so two. Seven will be our pivot, and then we do this comparison. So six will be here, and seven will be here. Okay, so here we made another one comparison. And six itself, right, so just be the pivot, and no one's to be compared with six. And for this one, so we have n equals to three, so three plus one over two, two. So this one will be our pivot. So we compare with three, so we have two, one, three. 
right? So three is done. So here we made how many comparison? We made another two because two compares three, one compares three, so plus two. Okay, so now we have two items. So this one will be our pivot and two will compare with it. So we have one, two. So one is done. Three, four, five, six, seven, right? And here two itself. Uh, just be a pivot and no one to be compared with. So we are done here. So in total, how many comparisons did we make? So we have 12, 13. So in this case, quick sort will need less comparisons. Okay, so that's how we um, like compare quick sort and bubble sort. Okay, let's take a look at the syllabus. So we've talked about 1.1 in the previous lecture, and today we talked about the bubble sort and quick sort. And then when using the quick sort, the pivot ch should be chosen as a mid items. So that is n plus 1 over 2. And if integer, we just keep it. Otherwise, we just round this one up. OK, so that's everything for today's lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.